you think back to the early 90s, the internet was starting out mostly as sort of a research tool and universities used it and a few businesses. All this infrastructure we had, PCs, departmental computers, servers, network, none of them were built with security in mind. Everything was built as if it would be run in isolation and no bad guys could ever touch it. Well, the internet allowed not only the good guys to connect to each other, but the bad guys to connect. But very quickly, the bad guys started finding the same vulnerabilities the good guys were finding. I think a, a lot of the early um, kids that were on the internet um, that were, you know, so-called hackers were, you know, trying to, uh, you know, figure out how to use the, it was kind of a being a rebel, you know, re re rebelling against society. Hey, I can break into computers and, you know, a lot of them were exploring, you know, the power of the computer, the power of the internet and, and you know, we're using the, uh, the internet as a way to connect to computers around the world. I really didn't ha ever have an intention or, um, you know, a malicious, you know, hey, I want to break in and steal stuff. I think, you know, that to me just didn't feel right. You know, I don't, I think you could have, people can go there, but at the end of the day, I felt like, you know, there's, there's better things to do and helping others protect their computers was the right thing to do. Knowledge is power and, you know, security knowledge was, was, gave you the ability to either protect the computer or break into a computer. He was a real quiet kid, grew up quiet, you never knew he was around, and uh, I mean the first inkling that he was um, rather smart, he wanted um, thousand piece puzzles that, uh, for adults that he would put together methodically, and that, that's all he did when he was a little kid was put puzzles together. Growing up I always liked uh, puzzles, chess, anything that you know could keep me engaged and, and you know trying to solve problems and, and then you, at the end you could show people, hey, look what I did. And I think that's, that, that kind of helped, you know, ultim ultimately, you know, got me excited about computers. They're kind of the ultimate puzzle. And early on, one of the things that got me into programming was the fact that I wanted to write a game. He read um, Gibson's uh, book, Neuromancer which had to do with computer security. And he's, that was the light bulb moment. And I think he was like 15 or 16 when he read that book. So he, um, but it gave him the idea that security in computers is a very big deal. When the internet started getting going in terms of not just uh, government and universities, but more commercial enterprises were getting online. Um, you know, my experience was, I actually was trying to get a summer job. Uh, uh, doing something with computers and the, the internet and Department of Energy actually had a program out at Lawrence Livermore National Labs. So I applied for that, uh, got accepted. They called Super Kid. It was bringing like the 50, 50 most nerdiest kids from every state out there. And while I was out there, uh, they were having a lot of security issues. Hackers were breaking in. I was kind of fascinated that you know, you have all these computers connecting and the doors and windows uh, on those computers were wide open. I saw an opportunity to develop kind of a software package that would go and if I knew the algorithm that hackers were using, I could take that and automate it and look for kind of an automated security expert to check the door and twist the knob and see if the door would open and then produce a report and I pitched this to the uh, Department of Energy and they, they said, yeah, that sounds like a great project that would help us find some security issues and we could, we could lock them down. And uh, from there, I developed the software to do that. Later on, their budget got cut um, and they couldn't pay me for the work that I had done. And uh, I was supposed to come back out there for a summer and, and wasn't able to do that. And initially, I, was, I felt bad, but it turned out, uh, you know, because they couldn't pay me, I ended up owning the IP of the uh, software that I developed. And that, that, obviously, you can do the math. While I was at Georgia Tech, uh, Georgia Institute of Technology, I, re I released the Internet Security Scanner that was finding all these vulnerabilities that the Department of Energy was benefiting from for free on the Internet. And I immediately 
I, I put it out there and said, hey, you can use it as long as you don't charge anybody for using this. Uh, and I immediately had uh, thousands of, of organizations around the world downloading this software and using it to test their own network. And, and then I got tons of requests from people saying, hey, I want this feature, that feature. So I'm sitting there going, wow, this could be a huge opportunity. That was kind of the tipping point in getting the business going. I could go get a, a business license, get incorporated, you know, really turn uh, you know, this concept of an of a, you know, internet scanner um, into an actual company. He called me from Georgia Tech after he had been in, and he was doing well. He was on the uh, dean's list, you know, he was good, making good grades. Mm -hmm. And he says, I invented this program that stops hackers, you know, to, for invading computers. And he says, but I've been getting these calls from Italy and the Bahamas and all these countries. He says, everybody wants it. And I, and I asked him, I said, well, how many, how many people have this pro, you know, how, how big a deal is this? He says, well, nobody has this program. I said, you mean nobody in the world has this program you invented? And uh, he says, yeah. And I says, the hell with school. <laughs> so I, I decided to take a break from school and called up my grandmother and asked her if I could use her spare guest room as uh, Internet Security Systems uh, first headquarters. He got real big and famous and make, was in Forbes magazine and one of the richest of the young and all this. And um, I think, you know, actually he was kind of shocked because he came down for Christmas with all his aunts and uncles and cousins and, and they treated him just like good old Chris, you know, and they still do. They don't care how much success he's had or money he's made. They, they, um, they're pretty uh, hardcore with them, I think. <laughs> but that's the way our family is, you know, it's, it's that kind of a family. They're not too much uh, into suck ups or whatever. I think the real puzzle you know, that Internet Security Systems was founded on is how do I help protect against, you know, as, as we dug deeper into the computer security problem, it actually turns out it's, it's, you know, it's such a huge problem. So many companies are wide open, so many computers were wide open, uh, you know, and every day it's almost impossible to keep up with the flood of, you know, all the security uh, mistakes and security bugs. The real challenge is how do you protect against that? We saw people like Chris Klaus have the idea first to say, how can we quickly discover vulnerabilities to warn people that they have these problems and, and create a vulnerability scanner that could be easy to use, provide quick results, not require uh, sort of gurus who were trained for, trained for years to operate it. But the Internet Security Scanner was you know, the first powerful tool to, you know, you, you put in a range of network IP range, and it would automatically start doing the work of what could have taken hours or days to scan a network. Within minutes, you're getting results back of what services were running on a computer um, connected to the internet. So you could see if it was running email, uh, services like FTP, which is file transfer protocol, uh, NFS, network file systems. And so things like the Internet Scanner allowed security people to at least come back and say, look, we're now connected to the Internet, so we need to do something. Um, where it took off was the accounting and audit firms realized when they did an audit of a business's information systems, they should be using these type of tools. The other thing that was kind of funny is I, I could sell it as a service, too. I didn't have to sell it as a software package. I actually had a company call up, um, a phone company out of New York City, had called up and said, hey, we want somebody to scan our network and tell us what vulnerabilities we have. And I was by far the cheapest price. In fact, he goes, you're so cheap, could you please raise your price? Because my, my manager won't think it's a legitimate service if it's, if it's not more expensive. And I said, okay, how about $20,000? But I was, I was pretty happy because it was just four computers uh, grandmother and me in the uh, in this little in the ISS headquarters at the time. So twenty thousand dollars went a long way to uh, actually getting us into a warehouse. And from there, I was ready to expand and you know grow double the size of the company in terms of employees and so on. And that's that's when I started searching for a, a business partner to to help me.
and, and the, probably one of the best things he did was get Tom, because he knew how everything about computers, but he knew nothing about businesses. Those first few days with Chris were actually uh, pretty unusual, I would say. I was used to going to work in a suit and tie, um, you know, commuting to New York, working in tall buildings. Um, Chris and I were meeting at uh, local restaurants, um, you know, at his grandmother's house, um, and it was quite unusual, but what was um, magic about it was the fact that we both really believed passionately that network security and computer security um, was a huge problem for businesses someday in the future. And, you know, that, that was the glue that held us together. The early days from the business side were full of trials and tribulations, and I think most people know that about this company. But um, we were beyond skid row um, at a time that Chris and I made a sales call to uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. I really look at that as a critical levering milestone for us. Um, was the fact that we not only engaged that customer in a business transaction at the time, um, we actually frightened them. Uh, Chris tells the story of me um, doubling the price and then doubling it again from his price list, and that order really changed the complexion of the company. Using credit cards was probably the cheapest form of capital we could have ever arrived at. And so I think we got to a grand total of 38 um, Visa, MasterCard type cards with cash advances against them. But that's what kept the company alive. My first day was the first time that I was actually, that I actually met Tom Noonan. And I had an opportunity to sit across the hallway from him. And I watched how Tom interacted with other people. And I thought, this man is, he's going someplace. You know, one of the most exciting epiphanies that I had in, in terms of the business opportunity um, really had less to do with the technology and more to do with the potential size of the market for network and computer security. Where Tom came in was to help really ramp up and bring more salespeople on board. One of the most frustrating things about the early days was our inability to convince the venture capital community that we were on to something very, very big. And one venture capitalist after another turned us down. They said, why would anyone want to secure the internet? There are no businesses out there. It's you know being used by universities and governments. Sorry, we're not uh, convinced that this is a business. The orders from JPL, Motorola, and others dramatically changed our, our position there. I think in that first round, we had some eight venture capitalists fighting over us only less than one year later. That venture capital really changed the world for us. We used that capital for three things. One, we built out uh, the most respected engineering and research team that we could in our industry, and that has served us well for many years. Two is we built out um, what is now known as one of the best enterprise sales forces in the security industry. And the third thing that we did with that money is we began to brand and market the company. When Internet Security Systems raised the, the first $4 million um, in the beginning of 96, uh, we set in the business plan we laid out what products we wanted to build and a couple, couple areas that we wanted to take the company technologically. One was building a product called Real Secure. And Real Secure was a concept of, you know, I knew this scanner could identify how hackers were breaking in. And then the second question a lot of people had was, how do you, how do you identify when hackers are breaking in? And that became kind of the first intrusion detection, intrusion protection product on the market. 
original go-to-market strategy for internet security systems was uh, entirely based upon a strategy that leveraged channel partners. One of my channel partners in Chicago said, the reason we're not selling any internet scanner is because no customers are asking for it. We're only selling firewalls because we get 100 calls a day to buy a firewall. And it was at that very moment that I realized that all of the effort we had put into that channel strategy, we were simply too early to the market and that the market needed a direct sales force to be successful with the internet scanner. The smart thing we did to overcome the challenge of the knowledge in the market was we invested a lot in public relations and analyst relations. So our thoughts were we needed independent thinkers to tell people, look, there's more to security than firewalls. The culture of ISS uh, didn't just happen. On uh, March 14, 1996, we held our first company meeting. At that time, we were about 35 employees already. Um, from that, as you know, many, many cultural uh, extensions have grown off that uh, original kind of founding core values and culture. Our purple shoe, you know, is at the heart of everything we do here. It's a really a recognition of the triumph um, that can occur when you work hard, you put your mind to it and have fun. When we first got our funding, Tom took off his shoe and drank champagne out of his shoe. So there was a group that decided that that just wasn't going to work anymore. So we went out and bought Tom a pair of stiletto heels so that he would have something very sexy to drink out of. Um, the green couch, furniture was expensive. You know, it was easy to have a blow-up couch. And so we had all our meetings at a blow-up green couch. And the green couch appeared. The green couch became its own little person, I guess, a, its own identity. And everyone kind of formed their parties around the green couch, and they became the green couch parties. So I think when you build a company, you've got to reach into the emotional aspect of what you're doing with employees, not just the business aspect. Chris Klaus, obviously, is our founding CTO, um, you know, set us on a direction and a vision for where we could take this company. Early on, uh, we were, you know, as we're building the products, uh, most of our security researchers that I had uh, recruited to come to join Internet Security Systems, they became part of engineering, and we didn't have a security-specific group. And they joined the, the building the team, you know, get, joining the team that was building the products. And there was kind of a conflict in priorities. One was adding the features to the product to make it easier to use, or new reports, and all that. And then there was this security knowledge. And so one of the, you know, we started identifying, man, there's, we really need a team that just focuses on security. They brought me in to run a, a special team for Chris Klaus called the X-Force. X-Force is one of the most respected uh, information security research units around the world. Uh, their expertise lies in finding new vulnerabilities and protecting our customers from new threats before they can actually become compromised. We spent a tremendous amount of time researching uh, what new software is coming out for the uh, infrastructure of the internet. And then if we find a major issue, we go back to the vendor who made it and say, hey, there's a bug, probably the first security company to really establish a security group within a security company that did nothing but security research. And we were one of the first to come out with uh, security advisories on a, on a frequent basis. Man has a intense desire for globalization, to grow, to serve other companies, to serve other customers, etc. 
but as a technologist and a businessman that had worked internationally for many years, I knew that the axiom that the first company in the territory usually becomes the leader. One of the uh, strategies that we uh, engaged as we expanded internationally was to hire local business people in their local culture and not displace Americans um, from the corporate headquarters into those locations. And that has served us very, very well. And we were generally the first internet security company in all of the regions that we performed in. And that's why today we still maintain the highest market share percentages outside of the United States. During the road show, we actually had a, you know, the, in, the, in the newspaper, a lot of stories happening, and one of the stories was about Logan Airport up in Boston, and we were actually in Boston that day talking to uh, investors and saying, hey, we're going public, here's, here's, here's the business that we're in, here's how we're protecting the world, and that day, some hacker had broken into the airport's control tower and had shut down the control tower for a couple of hours, and so it was, it was kind of interesting, you know, just ironic to, from a timing perspective, to uh, see that, uh, you know, here's, you know, here's, here's a newspaper clipping that reinforced our message exactly that day. And the day that stands out the most to me was probably the day of the IPO. We had a party the next day, and the excitement of the whole company, and the excitement of waiting to. to waiting for Tom and Chris to get off that elevator and to share with everyone else. I mean, they had taken us to that point. We were up bright and early um, for the opening of the ISS uh, stock trading on the NASDAQ stock market. And the feeling that went through my veins when the stock market opened and every single trade simultaneously was ISSX was electrifying. And so we, I started seeing ISSX, ISSX going across the ticker symbol um, and the signs going well and then it starts blinking and then crashes. It you know, goes blank and like the whole market just crashed. And uh, I'm sitting there going, mm, maybe some hacker didn't like us going public and took down NASDAQ. And uh, I was a little nervous there. We're waiting a few minutes going, OK, is the market crashed or what's going on? Turns out just the sign uh, had an issue with the volume of trades that we were having that day. The, the first day that I met Tom Noonan, he was asking me some questions. But one of the questions that he asked me is, how do you how would you rate ISS as a success? When would it be successful to you? And my answer to that was, one day I want to drive into the parking lot and look up to the side of the building and see internet security systems on the side of that building. The ideas for the current Atlanta headquarters began shortly after the IPO. Um, it was clear to us that uh, ISS was a tiger. It was growing and we needed space. And so building this building was unbelievably uh, fulfilling, I think, for all of us because we had been um, in six different locations in the last four years. We were spread out as a company, uh, compromising everything we did. And I remember some of the exciting times, uh, first painting all of our competitors' names on the original building that sat here and then uh, crashing them down with with the bulldozers was um, you know indicative of our competitive spirit and the fact that we were going to build uh, our house uh, this bridge to the future as our campus here in Atlanta. Now, many people look back to September 11th as a major change in the world of security, but really October of 2001 was a much 
bigger event to information and internet security. That was when the NIMDA worm hit. Um, the terrorist attacks were very much physical and impacted the economy and business. But the NIMDA event coming so quickly after that is what really changed many businesses' approach to internet security. It made them realize that attackers would go after vulnerabilities, go after unpatched systems. It made them realize that these attacks could damage the business. Planes didn't leave the, the hangars, trains didn't leave the stations, production lines stopped when many of these worms hit in 2001. By July of 2001, the company had missed its first quarterly earnings um, in its history. Um, Wall Street had turned against us. The capital markets were changing dramatically. Um, the bubble bursting had begun and the telecom meltdown was well underway. These were challenging times for a company that had only known success and growth and innovation. It was at that time that ISS showed its true colors. Um, we had to uh, reduce approximately 20 percent of the headcount of this company. Um, we had to start charging for Coca-Colas out of the machine and everything that we changed was tough on our employees. I think the lowest point that we've had at ISS was the day that we had to lay off 120 people. Uh, that was a very, very sad day for Tom because he realized that there were a lot of people whose livelihoods depended on ISS and because of situations we had to let those people go. I remember standing on the stage in Mojo's cafeteria for eight hours explaining to the employees in three different groups what was going to happen. And I think the most important thing for me was standing out on the sidewalk um, as each person that was terminated had to leave the building. I shook their hands and I told them it was tough, but the company had to do that or it wasn't going to survive. One of the smartest things we did uh, when the company fell upon hard times was to go right back to our basic values and our culture and use that as the vehicle to get us focused, to get us executing, and to get us excited again. Part of the, the early vision of internet security systems, kind of, we, we actually, I, I came up with a, uh, a quadrant, and the quadrant was you know, was, you know, network and system. So, you know, you had to protect your network or your systems, your, your routers, your servers, your desktops, your clients and all that. So we kind of came up with a, 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 a quadrant representing your network. And then we said for security, we want to be both on the assessment side and on the uh, monitoring and protection side. And so this four, four, um, quadrant zone was really the first establishment of what area we wanted to own. It gave us a road map to say we wanted to be both not just a security company that protected your network or just a security company that protected your servers. We actually had a compelling story to say we're going to protect both network and servers and in each of those quadrants we plotted what products would actually ultimately exist in those products. As we've migrated into our Preventia product line, how the needs of customers have changed is that they have now an all-in-one appliance. Uh, the numbers of variables of things that could go wrong, so to speak, with a solution are severely reduced, which is good. Um, it makes the cost of maintenance much less for the customer and uh, also from a technical support standpoint, we have a lot of the variables uh, controlled. The JD Power certification for uh, internet security systems, uh, customer support worldwide, was the first uh, that the industry had ever seen of this certification and internet security systems was the first to achieve that. Uh, globally as an organization. Uh, secondly, uh, the customer support group was able to achieve what we call support center practices certification known as SCP. We were known for not only working hard but but playing hard and you know we got in trouble sometimes but that was okay because 
it was all in good intentions. And we had a lot of, we had a blast at, you know, company functions and getting people together and having great success. The turnaround in this company was dramatic. Um, in the third quarter of 2001, despite the events of September 11th, this quarter, this company beat its earnings targets. And then the fourth quarter, we beat our earnings targets again. And the company hasn't missed a beat since then. As a whole, uh, in our new millennium and the economic downturn that we all went through, it was a very difficult time. It was a difficult time to innovate. It was a difficult time to grow your business. The fact that ISS came through that downturn made us a healthy and strong organization and made us a great candidate, which is why IBM chose to partner with us. You know, I think if you look at both Tom and I, we've, we've been very fortunate because you know, we thought what we were doing was an important mission and what was exciting is to see validation of that by getting to testify in front of the, the Senate, in front of Congress, and talk about you know, these security issues, how they're impacting us, what can we do as a nation to move the ball forward and, and making sure that we're protecting um, our national infrastructure. And I think you also will find that Internet Security Systems was not only helping the U.S. government, but governments around the world to say, hey, how do I protect my infrastructure? For the consumer, government, and business, the interconnected network we call the internet is becoming an extremely dangerous place. In the last five years, we've seen the innocent computer hacker replaced by very aggressive organized crime. The future of computer security is, is extremely important. We still need to make sure that we're moving in the right direction, um, but ISS has played an important role in creating awareness and getting the message to the right people, all the way up to the president, where uh, Tom Noonan served as a, a, um, an advisor and, and part of a council to the White House in saying, what can we do to help protect the world? The uh, relationship with IBM uh, and Internet Security Systems has actually gone back formally to 1999. IBM has been a business partner of Internet Security Systems, but in February of 2006, a former boss of mine at Dun & Bradstreet, Julie Donahue, contacted me and said, guess what, I'm in charge of security and privacy at IBM and I want to talk to you about you know what's happening in this marketplace. Um, Julie's brilliant, always has been, and the more we talked, the more we started to see the unique potential um, that could accrue from uh, building this partnership more strategically, from putting together the most respected brand in the enterprise with the most respected and trusted brand in security. The X-Force's expertise that's been invested on for many years has actually built the most sophisticated and accomplished vulnerability science research unit in the world. And IBM will be able to capitalize on that tremendously as they team up X-Force with their own research and development capabilities. I think everyone felt that this was a, a very positive and good thing for internet security systems, that we would grow. October 25th, uh, or as we know it here, day one was a pretty exciting day for all of us at ISS. It's an exciting day for our employees an exciting day for our customers, an exciting day for IBM, and most importantly, it was the day that the security industry began a very dramatic change. Chris has a unique 
quality about him um, in terms of his ability um, to see what others can't in technology and the um, vision for technology. We wanted Chris's ideas um, to bubble up and to generate and we hired engineers to go build the products that he would dream about. I feel so bad for kids nowadays that they're just handed everything and, and um, it's the wrong message. If you want a superstar, you know, make them earn it. And they do, they learn the value of things, value of people, value of money, value of everything, and they're more, I think they're more successful. And I think you can see people all the way down the road, you know, movie stars and big business people, they, they weren't handed things, they had to work for it. The threats will keep coming, new technologies will be in use, New business processes will happen that break the old way of doing security, and new attacks will come about. Uh, but we have to get out of this mode of just always chasing after these changes. I think you know, Internet Security Systems' role, uh, even within IBM as the security division, is going to have a profound impact on helping us stay on top of protecting these corporations and companies and ultimately consumers um, to, to having a safe computing environment. I think. Over the next 20 years, our kids are growing up to almost be integrated in with technology. We have most importantly protected people's businesses and we have done that through creating a wonderful group of people who work very effectively together. I'm excited when I come to work here, when I see the progress and new discoveries we make. I'm continually surprised by the brilliance and innovation uh, of our engineers. And I'm always challenged by the creativity of our adversary as new threats become more difficult to deal with. Um, every new problem for us is an opportunity to shine. Internet security systems has been a, you know, a unique privilege for me um, from so many aspects. The people that I've worked with, uh, the challenges that we've tackled and overcome, quite frankly, the challenges that we've tackled and, and failed at, all of those have you know, become part of the heritage of this company. ISS will be remembered as just a real pioneer and innovator. We created whole markets. There wasn't a vulnerability assessment market. There was an intrusion detection market. Those are markets we pioneered, we led, we created, and I think ISS will always be looked at as a thought leader in those spaces. Every day Tom would come in and say, okay, next year it's going to get just a little busier. And it, it changed, it was always busy, it changed, but it was always good busy. If I could be remembered for one thing um, here at Internet Security Systems, um, it would be um, that I was, you know, one member of a team of employees um, that fought passionately, um, that believed um, that were committed and that pursued a vision painted by a young man out of Georgia Tech and um, I was his cheerleader. I think we've created an amazing legacy of really building a, a company we can be proud of and you know it was amazing to see how people came together almost as a family and respond and you know really at the end of the day you know resulted in helping thousands or millions of people directly or indirectly um, and having a better safe computing uh, environment. <laughs>